Just want to thank everyone for their continued support. Things are things are going really good right now, I'm not going to lie. And this space is one that I'm really looking forward to putting out into the Rust world. Before we start the video and all that, let me plug the socials. Make sure you guys subscribe, like the video, all that good stuff. Check out the Twitch, join up the Discord, and uh, hit me up on Twitter as well, guys. Let's go. This video just got uploaded and you might have missed it, so uh, give it a peep if you want. And now we can jump onto the tour of this base and I know you're going to enjoy it. Alright gang, let's get touring on. 3x3, three three, absolute banging looking base from the outside. Uh, we'll kick it off with the uh, mini Satori disconnectable as we always do. Boom. Hopefully you boys can the script at this point, you know what's going on here, I would assume. And um, any configuration of garage doors, windows, whatever you want on that. Alright, gatehouse is super crazy and really bog standard. If you want, slap some half walls above or below for some turret spots. Completely up to you. Compound has got space for furnaces. And attached to our wide gaps are some breach peaks that you guys can utilize. So the base bitches can look after their furnaces. Keeping the compound not too expensive right now, so our respawn points are on the corners like this. The beds aren't covered, but the lockers are. And that's all just to shave off a little bit of cost and not spend too much inside our compound. So you've got a bit of a wide gap channel wall, you've got your respawns, but it's nothing too expensive to add on. And it helps you get your high walls placed down nice and evenly to make it all look pretty from the outside, because that's the most important thing. Does the base look pretty? Talking about the base, it's symmetrical by two, so we have two sides that look like this with a quick shoot all the way up to our shooting floor from compound without sacrificing any walls of honeycombing. So just a useful shoot that you will definitely take advantage of and enjoy. Compound up to shooting floor. And there's another one of them on the opposite side. Then we have this side of the base which involves our front door and our mobility chute heading into our cores. One of them leads into starter, one of them doesn't. Let's go to the starter one, because that's the interesting one. Heading inside the front door and some more doors, we get to our starter 3x3. Three three. Uh, the doors in the middle, that's the only difference really. Then it's just a box down to 3x3. Three three. Plenty of boxes, the ramps are in there for honeycombing, and two workbenches because absolute giga chad gaming. You're going to have two workbenches in your starter base realistically. Um, main TC upkeep is here. Keep in mind there'll be four externals as well, upkeeping your wide gaps. It's a chonkster base, okay? I'm not gonna lie, but get the jackhammers out. You boys and girls will get it down easy peasy. Heading through and up the jump up. We're into our room room. Now, this is kind of like an open core, except we haven't sacrificed a single door spot because I want the space to be comfy. I want it to be convenient, but I don't want to sacrifice any raid cost in case those weirdos catch you sleeping and they hit your base offline. Let's not make it a cheap raid for the freaks that like to do that. And I definitely am one of those freaks that offline people. I think we all are, if we're, if we're honest. If it's the right group. But anyway, four uh, three staggly rooms with a couple of boxes here. Six beds can fit in the space or some bags. Tier 2 to craft meds, and for symmetry we slap some in on that side. Four more boxes on the way up, and that's basically the roam floor. Um, fully covered. Let's head out and up again. Jumping up, we have access to a ankle biter to our next set of boxes. And if you take the embrasure off, you can see into your room room. Heading further up our mobility chute, we're met with a battery and a way in to our uh, next set of boxes. So in here we've got boxes and tards to cover. Don't forget your ankle biters as well to protect this floor. And this is just if you run out of storage really, it's just extra backup boxes, overflow kits or farm, anything like that. And the two tards cover this floor nicely, assuming you're a group that likes to leave all your doors open because who doesn't like to do that? Jumping up, we have a bedroom floor. Obviously you'd want to spam some more beds in here. Uh, you're going to have more than four people living in this, but yeah. Four people are going to get lockers in there with them, and then the other beds are just going to get spammed in the middle of the floor. 
and they'll probably get a box or something like that. But your favorite players, they all get a, get a locker and a bed and a door. And then we can go ahead and jump up. And this final door leads out onto shooting floor. If you want to completely skip the bedroom floor, you can go straight from ability shoot into this section and bypass the uh, shooting floor if you want. So that's what that's for. Heading out into shooting floor, it is just cool. It's the standard kind of shooting floor that you'd see on 4x4s and such. However, we did it on a 3x3, so original. Um, really stable, this thing just survives after a pummel. You're going to have this shooting floor up for days, man. The main base could decay and you're still chilling. Um, endless peaks all the way out into compound. Uh, nice spots to peek people that are far away, looking out nice and far. But yeah, this is just a monster shooting floor. And we've kitted it out with everything you could need. You have your roof peaks accessible all the way throughout the shooting floor. Due to this inner level being sunken, so you don't even need to go anywhere to roof peak. You can go straight from here to here and you can peek along. Let's say you're getting top down and pummeled at the same time. You slap on a couple windows and these cannot get used against you. You just cover up, focus here, take them off, focus up here. Um, all the way around we have our breach peaks and you're safe when you're using these. There's walls at the back to keep you safe from behind. And you can peek into compound, you can see your beds over there and down below. Um, and then on top of that is our roof exit, but we won't go up there just yet. We're not ready for that. More reach peaks over this side. These are perfect for staring into compound down this side. And these are perfect for if this section of your base has been pummeled and there's a nice big hole in this wall here. And the raiders have decided to jump in to access the boxes. That's when you can kind of use this as an inner peak down type of thing so yeah above our breaches is a bedroom you can have a nice little look on roof from here as well and um again there's four of these so all your best buddies get these beds and the goombas on your team they're stuck with the sleeping bags and compound uh heading up onto roof just a simple jump up from here comes with a little peak as well but you're obviously exposed as soon as you open the garage doors so keep that in mind and the roof is nice and open because let's get some minicopters and scrap helicopters on the go. Those are always fun. Never goes wrong. On each corner of the roof we have segmented little rooms where you can spawn in, access your vending machine, and of course focus a specific point without being exposed from any other angle. So if you just want to look out here you can focus in on that and you're safe from behind. And of course there's four of them, so there's one for every side of the base. Around here we have our roofs to stop people from getting squeezed down through here because you don't want that. And same on this end. And they also provide a nice head glitch out the way. If you're an M2 beamer, even though that gun stinks now, you can sit here and beam some boys with M2. Or you can use it to get a slightly higher angle and potentially peek people inside your compound. And over this end is a perfect little spot for the turret. The turrets are nice and spread. Some of them are under roofs and some of them are on the edges to hopefully avoid them all being taken out in an MLRS strike. And they also provide a little bit of cover into this section from raid bases that are going to be the same height as this base. Because we've not really gone too tall on this one and I've seen, seen some Chinese boys throw up a raid base about this height. It happens on vanilla. I am now finding out, so yeah. If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, check this video out, it's a bang. And uh, yeah, you guys can be in on the inside joke. But yeah, that's the base, four windmills on top, you've got your batteries. If I didn't place enough batteries, I'm sure there's more spots that you guys can find, but I like them just in the mobility shoots. I'm never really the electricity guy, believe it or not, even though I can build. I try and avoid doing the electrical works, because that's so much effort. But yeah, boom, base tier done. I already know you love it, I don't even have to ask, you guys definitely, you like it. Anyway, let's jump on to what the base costs, because obviously you want to build it, that's now the next piece of knowledge you need. Overall the base costs this, and that includes everything that you just saw inside the tour, every single little deployable I placed in the compound and everywhere, that's what you're going to need. To simplify things, here is it in box amounts, makes it easier to visualize exactly how much of each material you're gonna need to build the base lastly is the total upkeep you already saw the main tc upkeep this is including the four externals that upkeep your wide gaps and 
now you know what you need to build it, uh, where you need to upkeep it. Let's get on to how to build it. And it's a three by three, so this is gonna be expandable. So there's no excuses. As long as you can get the farm, you can get this built and you'll love it. I'm gonna love it when I build it soon. Let's go. Okay, let's get on to the building portion of this and we're gonna start with the three by three. And our door's gonna be in the middle this time. Going in like that. Then on the left, we're gonna have room for furnaces and on the right, I like my TC. So no half height floors in there. Uh, on the opposite side is all loot rooms, all three yeah, slots. And all of those lit rooms are going to have some ramps. And then just floors on top and door frames anywhere you missed. Get your TC in there and head outside to get your shelf. And don't do bad TC placement. Okay, boom. Star base complete. Plenty of box space, get it filled up. Plenty of bag space for you boys who are the big boy groups. Then we'll expand out into a bit of an airlock. Three triangles, window on the left, single door on the right. And waller in. Our jump up will be situated in front of the window. And then we just have garage doors leading through to the star base. Add that on that end, and on this end as well. This side does have an entrance, even though it doesn't lead directly into starter base, it is still an entrance point to at least the second floor. And the base is symmetrical, so just the same airlock, window on the left, door on the right. These sides over here don't actually have any uh, airlocks, but we're going to add a triangle. Because um, we're going to use this on the second floor, we're going to utilize this triangle. It's part of the 3x3, so we'll bring that up as well with us. Next, let's work on the second floor. We'll start with our chutes, because uh, they're the simplest part. So we'll wall them in, match the height, and we'll enter this floor with a double door. Each time this is going to change, so just keep that in mind. Then we can place our jump up, zigzagging across from where we came from. Just like that. And this time we're going to have a window. Hard side facing how I did. Uh, lastly, we're going to wall it in. And we're going to do floors with a ladder hatch. And we're going to have a door. For this one. And right at the top of our door, spot for a bat right in there. So that's our ability shoot. We go double door, window, single door. So let's do that. And the jump ups are just at the exact opposite place from where they last were. So that's easy to remember. Finishing off with a single door. Okay, so mobility shoot's done. And we'll raise this up as well. Okay, so we got all that raised up. And in these little shoots, we're going to do half wall. Probably better rotating that actually, sorry. Then a window. With floors on top. And boom. Like that. So we've got our little shoots built up now. Let's work on the uh, main 3x3. Raise all these corner points up to two walls. Just so you have some freedom to build without... Uh, people seeing what's going on. We'll start off with half walls in the middle and at the opposite sides of half walls, low walls. Then half walls in front of every loot room. Then to the sides of each loot room, full walls. With half walls on top. Uh, for our entrance point, ramp at the triangle for mobility. A little bit easier once you get the boxes down. Should run over that quite smoothly. In the middle we do a frame, and then before we add in any floors, let's get some ramps in here. Add some floors, and you should get your boxes on there, uh, nice and easy. 
Then in the center, remember, we have our beds all the way along six beds. And get your door frames and garage doors in before you do that. So you don't have to pick up any beds. Then we can get our roofs on. And it's not an open course, so no peaks on this point. Except for up there, I guess. And then we can work on these loot rooms. Uh, starting with the ramp at the bottom, with the raised point heading in towards the middle of the base. And if any of these ramps are red, uh, there's a reason for that. It's because the box is underneath, i.e. this box, for example. If you were to slam that as far back as you can, that would block the ramp placement. So make sure in your star base you're bringing these a little bit forward to save yourself some hassle. Um, then we can add in some triangles. These triangles that I'm placing outside are not necessary. They're just so we can get that one. And then you would then break it. Just a little trick to save you running outside your base. Uh, to get everything placed. So break those. Once you've used them. And already we're looking pretty cool. Got our mobility down. We've got our room room. And it's all safe to use and store in. Get our final triangles in there. And there you go. Room room looking completed. Nice. Get all your doors on that and you're safe to use that. Nice and early room room. Okay, third floor is just more storage. So, standard 3x3 design. And you can raise the walls in the core. Just like that. And floors. And get your half heights in there. Again, if you decided to, you could make sure there's no half holes in here. Save one of these rooms for uh, mixing tables or something like that. If you don't think you're going to need all the storage, there's more places for boxes. And get your door frames in there as well, don't forget all them. Okay, so now this is our jump up. We already built that, remember, when we were down below. So we have that ready. And on this floor, we're going to cap it off with windows this time. If they want to place. Just like that. Uh, in the middle, above our door, we do another door. And then we can add in the walls for our bedrooms. So this time, no half height shelves, because these are bedrooms. Uh, on these triangles, just add in walls the door frame like that and remember this will be a spot for our turret inside our roof just like that so it all works out uh, even though the core doesn't match the height of the outside it's it's all for a reason don't worry and you can see our 3x3 is really starting to piece together this is it now at maximum height it doesn't get any taller than this except for the uh, towers and stuff like that on roof but 3x3 is adds max height Okay, so our 3x3 is nice and complete. We're going to get onto externals now. Depending on what kind of server you're playing on, you might want to get your externals down quicker. So we'll build out from uh, the single door here with three squares. Uh, just like that. And then we'll come back in the middle with this triangle. We don't want to do too much over here because we don't want to block anything else. So we're just going to leave it like this for just now. And uh, from this triangle here, we can build our gatehouse. And from our gatehouse, we can build our external TC. I've been playing a wipe and people keep griefing my externals, so I'm starting to beef them up a little bit more now. I used to just do single doors because no one bothered, but um, from now on, we're doing window garage door because these guys just won't leave our externals alone. Don't forget your windows just so you can get enough stability to place down this. There we go. Okay. Really standard gatehouse, again, uh, you can add the half holes in there if you want to, but I personally can't be bothered. Alright, so that's one external, and it's actually just the exact same thing um, everywhere, so we can do it over here too. You can build out this triangle, you can just leave this here, if you want. Look at that.
yeah, doing this kind of quickly because we already did it. Uh, you know what's going on. The bad thing about the windows is your teammates never go and get the codes, but... Oh well, that's your teammates' fault if they don't get it. And we're doing the uh, three square wide gap method if that wasn't obvious already. And we're not filling in all of our wide gaps just because we don't need them yet. And we don't want to block the uh, h tune square that's on the corners that we're going to be doing. I don't know why I started to do that. Okay, that's three out of four. Speeding through it. Alright, boom. Four externals down. I'm gonna go get a drink and then I'll be back to it. Alright, we're back. Let's get back to work. Looking at the corners now, we'll finish off all the triangles of this 3x3. As to not add any confusion when building the shooting floor. Fill all those in. Okay, that's what we need. Now, to get a look at the shooting floor, we need to do the uh, hitch tune square. So, in order to do that, we need to start with the square over here. Two triangles and squares bringing back in like that. A little bit weird to look at. I'll show you guys again a little bit slower because I could have been too fast. So from our single door square, then a triangle, and then a triangle, and then a square, then a square. And we're keeping that triangle there that touches and then just reconnecting it like that. So we've got our nice little corner piece. And you can see we need space to be able to build this. That's why we didn't bring our externals all the way in too early. So making sure you stop here before you build the HTUNA uh, square. Or else you're not going to have the room to do that. HTUNA square is going to be decaying because this does not count as foundations touching. And unfortunately the confusion doesn't stop here. We're going to add in some walls first. To make sure this connects we're going to add frames over here. Then we're going to place a square over here with frames like this. And then we can add in our little breach peak section. And another one there. And the reason we placed this beforehand is because these roofs uh, block the placement of this square, which doesn't let that one bring along. So, yeah, that's what's going on there. And we do want a half height um, frame in here to separate it. So come in with the triangles and build it in like that. And then you have your beach peak. Looking nice and cool. And you've got your little bedroom spot over here with the lockers. Okay, a little bit confusing, but there's four of them, so you guys get to see it three more times to make sure you fully understand what's going on. So over here, we're gonna place in our walls to make sure everything connects. Then we're gonna add in our frames. Next, we can add in uh, a roof, one roof first then a window. Then before we place in our second roof, we're going to come through, bring this out, not place one of them, add triangles for our lockers inside the compound. Then we can place in our next roof ramp and our half wall. Then to get a frame in the middle, connect it up like that. Let's go again. Walls, frames, one roof, one window, bring it out, connect it, add lockers, second roof, and second window, and then floor frames. Boom, last try, let's do it super fast, walls, frames, one roof, one window, bring it out, connect it, 
lockers in. And then our second roof, second set of windows, and lastly, our floor frames. Boom. Hopefully you guys understood everything that was going on there. And uh, yeah, just do it all on every corner, and that should be all connected now with these frames here. Nothing over here will be decaying. And it's all connected up. Okay, so we've done a lot of work on the uh, entrance sides. Remember, over here we have a mobility chute. And it's on the right triangle like this. Uh, so just raise it all the way up. And same over here. With a ladder hatch frame at the top. And that's your mobility chute. Again, you can add that in as early as you want. Um, and we'll get that on the opposite side as well. Remember to stop before the window. We're not raising it up to the same height. We're leaving it at this level. Then you can get a ladder hatch at the top and normal ladders going all the way up. Um, now that all the components are in there for the compound, we might as well throw the high walls in. Okay, so our compound is its all the same gaps, so it's exactly the same placement. You just do it once. Uh, we're going to bring it out first to make a little point. So it's kind of got like a star compound going on. Looks great. It looks awesome. Bring it out and then bring it back in with these uh, points coming through. And then from above, you can see that that just looks cool for one. And it gives us extra space for our large furnaces, which is exactly where we're going to put them. Boom. Looking cool. As for barricades, hopefully that's not too confusing. Over here is a really basic set up like that, sorted. Uh, in here can be a little bit more confusing, so we will uh, fix that. So you can come in with one that way. And they can both come in like this. And you're not getting in there. So yeah, compound really easy. Hopefully. It's always easier when you're on a, uh, a build server, of course, but yeah. Looking pretty good. We've got some triangles going on here that we can now fill in. They're purely honeycombing, so... Head around the base. I'll keep symmetry on for this because it's really basic. We're just going around filling in honeycombing. Uh, only to this height. Keep in mind, not any higher. And same over here, next to our ladder hatch jump. Nothing going on with these triangles. We don't do anything with them. Again, we're stopping at the max level there. Uh, we'll move on to the wide gaps now. And we're going to start working on the easiest points. So from here, these standalone triangles next to our bridge peaks are super simple. They get raised up and there's nothing fancy going on there. Just like that on every side. That's the full extent of what they got up to. Then we can work on our corner pieces, so we're going to raise those up. And right before you get to the max height, throw in some windows. And same thing over here, we're going to stop near the top. Place that for a second so I can get that in. There we go. Um, this time we're going to add in walls like this, just to give you some cover. So that's how we fill that one in. And then we can leave that alone for just now. Same on every corner. Raising up. Stop at the top. Fill in windows. Then over here. Really doesn't want a place. There we go. Walls this time. Two out of four. Walls at the top. Okay, so the corner pieces are done. Now we can have a look at our gatehouses, and I'm going to put on the four sided symmetry for this. You start off by placing triangles just to fill in our gap here, 
And then we're going to raise all the way up from including the gatehouse. Once you get near the top, you can add in a half hole in the middle one. And then door frames here. Then we can drop back down below again. And we can raise up our door frames. And again, once we get near the top, we'll fill it in with windows. And that's our little section over here. And I had four-sided symmetry on for that, so it's just the same on every side. Shooting floor is completely symmetrical, so yeah, nice and cool there. Now that all the frames are down for shooting floor, let's go ahead and do the floors. So we'll throw down the triangles. Uh, squares in the middle. Triangles coming off main base like this to create the peak down. And then back out like that. And we just repeat the process all the way along. And that's all of our floors in for the shooting floor. Now that all of our floors are in for the shooting floor, we can place in our windows. We'll leave alone uh, the breach peaks for just now on this end. That's a little bit different over there, so just leave that. Get the windows in for just now. And then on the corner pieces, remember we have our roof exit. So we come out this way. Just like that. All of our doors facing away from each other going around in a little circle uh, then we can move on to this section here a little bit different get some floors in the middle uh, windows off to the side and then finish off a half walls have a window to look on roof a half i jump up to get on top like this and finish it off so you got space for one bed and one locker in there if you place it properly, you can still do the jump easy enough. And we'll do that on every side, just so you guys can see. Alright, and I'm back with you guys. I finished up all the towers. Now we are good to place in some frames on the shooting floor, uh, just for stability. And if you're wondering the ideal spots for turrets to most efficiently cover all the space in the shooting floor, is uh, one one per uh, one per side over here. And because our shooting floor is decently open. You can see the turrets have angles all the way down to each other. A few more frames to go, unfortunately, and then the shooting floor is all good. These frames that I'm placing are essential to stop people from falling through the gaps in there. Uh, you don't want to get pushed through your roof, so... These ones here, we need to get down. Okay, all of our frames are placed in. Over here we can add a little bit of an airlock though. Just like that. Make it a little, little bit safer to go out to shooting floor. And uh, yeah, once that's done, throw in the floors. These floors will come off the main base. Like that. And then we're just matching what's below, apart from this exception here. Okay, and we're nearly finished now. Our roof is again symmetrical, so nothing too crazy going on there. We're going to start with towers. Uh, one single door for vending machine, one door to get in. And then a ring above for a windmill. Of course, you can go higher than this if you want to. Nothing's stopping you. Um, underneath here, super easy. That on every side. Placing all of our triangle roofs from underneath is the best bet. And then coming back up above to upgrade them. Finishing off the towers, I already started on that, that's my fault.
and all of those windmill pods are done now. And you got your spots for your vending machines and your extra towers on the sides here. Next up, we'll go towards this end of the base, kind of here. And beside each one of these roofs, we're going to do a window. Just filling in the gap now. And place all those windows, and then we can place in roofs. And the roofs are going to go in towards the gap that you can uh, kind of fall through. So over this side, like that. Uh, the best place to place them from is just to come from above and stand on top of your window like that. All facing out. Leaving loads of space in the middle for scrap helis. And uh, if the roof is nice and open, it means our roof pickups are even more efficient. Okay, turret spots on the roof. We have one per side. That is kind of hidden from the outside. Obviously, anyone who does a little bit of building knows that these backwards roofs are hiding a turret, but you know. Then underneath here, these are a little bit more hidden and unexpected. And that should cover it for the roof. Get your windmills up on top. We'll do that now. And boom, once you've done that, that completes the base design. If you guys did enjoy this video, please feel free to leave me a like and drop me a comment down below. I'm really looking forward to seeing this base out there on some servers. It's it's super nice and um, I'm personally going to be building it. So if you see one of these, <laughs> it might be me and my team. So yeah. Hopefully you guys find the tutorial easy enough to follow. Remember, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments or you'll get an even quicker reply inside my Discord down below in the description. And I will see you boys in the next video. Cinebit.